uh, the interesting part of this meetup is over. Let's go to the fun part now. Uh, we're going to talk about error handling in uh, the JavaScript or web version. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I'm Stratos Pavlakis. I'm lead engineer at Workable. Thank you all for coming. Um, who has uh, seen my, pre my presentation about Git before? Wow. Aguilos presentation about remote working? <laughs> okay. Uh, before we get into error handling, I'd like to uh, open a parenthesis. Come on, look at that. Uh, um, this is our uh, schedule for this season. And I uh, would like to invite you to talk. So if you get bored of me or Angelos or uh, Elias, you can't get bored of Elias, but uh, you know what I mean. Uh, please, um, you know, I I'm sure you have uh, uh, very interesting things to contribute to. Um, we'll help you. You know, if you have an idea, we'll help you make the most out of it. So don't be shy. Closing parenthesis and get back to errors. Uh, that's a, a well-known error in the Java world. Huh? Have you seen it before? This is an error in uh, Swift when you're coding for, uh, um, for IS. And this is in JavaScript. OK. OK. Maybe, no, that, that's an event, actually. This is an error. But uh, uh, no, it's, it's not that JavaScript doesn't have typed errors. I mean, you have a uh, range error and typer and uh, reference error, right? Come on, you know, you know that. Um, but in our code, whenever we uh, use a try catch or catch uh, inside the, um, you know, uh, at the end of a promise chain, um, we we end up to to have to deal with uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, and this is error handling. Um, it's the art of failing gracefully. And uh, we have to wonder why we, should wh why we should bother about that. And it's uh, because it builds better trust with our customers. OK. So especially in certain industries like banking, but even in uh, consumer apps, when you have, you know, we know that software can fail, right? But when it reacts well to failure, uh, you know, it builds trust between us and uh, between the customers and the, the users and the software. <sighs> Ilya, what's wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with that, really. Uh, let's go again. What's wrong with that? Come on. OK, it's, uh, my younger self would say that. Fix the copy in your set. OK, which makes sense, actually. Doesn't it? I mean, it does. OK, it, it, it's a shady copy, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a shady copy. But if that was that easy, uh, why, would we, why do we keep getting that cryptic messages in that kind of bad UX? I mean, I'm sure not uh, uh, in the software that you write, but software that I've written is pretty much like that. Um, oh. Hello, Gandalf. Uh, it's been a long time. Everyone is using memes of Game of Thrones now, so, you know. You had to say anything about the subject? Oh, uh, he says that we don't design for error. <sighs> Designing for errors. Um, so I thought um, I should wonder about that. And the old wizard said to me that you have to, you know, Think about the, the topology, you know, uh, what kind of errors do we deal with? And we deal with business errors, okay, like authentication, validation, stale data, you know, errors that have to do with uh, our, uh, you know, our domain problem. And non-business errors, uh, services we use, storage, network, that kind of stuff. Uh, these are two circles, but apart from that, it, it, it's here to show that um, a subset of those errors are common errors throughout our apps. Okay, so you have business errors and uh, non-business errors that are common throughout our apps. And um, designing for error means that you have uh, to come up with an error handling solution that's present. Okay, if you don't have any, it means you don't deal with error. Okay, shy. Uh, 
it should be as subtle as possible. For example, you have a polar, uh, you know, to update a counter or something on the page and it fails. Okay, you don't need to, to tell me that. Okay. Um, it has to be comprehensible. I mean, that error be before wasn't comprehensible. Okay, it was error 500. You may understand that, but Dimitris may not. Okay. Dimitris will understand as well. Okay. <laughs> Actionable. Uh, I mean, I, I should be able as a user to do something about that. Okay. Targeted. Um, they should have the smallest area of effect possible. Okay. So uh, I can't load photos for inside a, a, an app. Okay. What else can I do? I mean, is, is the app completely useless without uh, photos? Um, or a certain resource, and they should be reportable. I mean, we as engineers and the product owners and the stakeholders should somehow um, be notified about those errors. Okay, so we have to write code to deal with those errors. Wh where does this code belong to? Um, Ilya, you shouldn't sit here, man. You're gonna get all the questions from me now. Where should we put that, uh, that piece of code? Where we hold all the pieces of information. Where is that? Where there is nothing between our code and our user. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you place your error handling code um, in a place that has, uh, you know, uh, strings attached to other parts of the, of the software, you may get into a... Um, uh, this bad situation where the error keeps repeating and doesn't let, uh, let you handle it. And uh, we have to think about our users, so I think that the error handling should belong, you know, uh, closer to the UI as much as possible. Okay. So, as a young uh, engineer, I knew I had to anticipate for errors. I, I had to get the product team involved, because, you know, uh, at the end you have to you know, uh, show something to the user. So the product team should be aware of that, okay? Uh, the product team should be made aware that certain things can fail. And there's one more thing that still eluded me back then. So I thought to myself, I got a solid theory. Had a, I had a small team of engineers back then. Let's do this. But then, if you think about it, or uh, as a matter of fact, as I found out, this didn't work out. Okay, so this is a real uh, short story of errors. Uh, first protagonist is uh, Walter. Uh, he's uh, kind of badass, don't you think? I mean, he's been writing uh, Java Enterprise for years, and he's doing SOAP services and uh, stuff like that, you know. Really senior. And he anticipates for all errors, always. He has to build a, a login screen. And um, Walter... It's a species, so he adds pretty much, you know, error handling for everything that could go wrong. So, bad credentials, deactivated account, getting offline, CSRF, other. So, uh, this code becomes pretty much like this. Okay, this is a validation error. He has to deal with that. Then, account deactivation. Then... Uh, that's CSRF, then uh, generic catch-all error, okay. And then he has to log it so that, uh, you know, he gets notified about it. All right, okay. Um, then Jesse comes and joins the team. I mean, he's a junior engineer. He was hired two weeks ago. That's his first feature. And he anticipates no errors at all. <laughs> I got many pictures, yeah. A few words, but many pictures. Okay. Uh, so, he gets uh, um, the brand's sparkling new feature, this uh, uh, comment editor where you can get to reply to comments on the, inside the web app. Um, okay, it, it may be, you know, uh, uh, you know the tenth uh, screen of the web application, but it's uh, the first for Jesse. Okay. And... The product uh, manager describes only a single error, okay? We're dealing with a so very sophisticated app here, so uh, the server has this machine learning AI and uh, 
uh, returns a validation error in case you know uh, someone uh, writes uh, offensive stuff in there. Uh, so they tell him, Jesse, you have to look out for uh, those uh, those errors. Okay. But after a couple of code reviews and um, uh, across during the demo to stakeholders, that didn't go well. Uh, he finds out the reality, the harsh reality that apart from the profanity, you know, validation error, he had to care about being offline, authentication, CSRF, and all other stuff. Okay. So does that ring a bell? Okay. Same stuff as the previous screen. But he didn't know. How was he supposed to know? Is, is Jesse's fault? Ilya is Jesse's fault? You don't think so. I agree with you. And then the product manager comes with this great idea that, you know, Jesse, you have to deal with, those of, with all of those, but on top of that, if he gets offline, we're going to, you know, put a little twist to it. Um, we're going to add a prompt to send it when he comes back online. Wow. So, Jesse comes up with that. Okay, he deals with a profanity error. By the way, how can you tell that's profanity? Error, that's a validation error. The only way to judge is by the, the number, huh? the HTTP status, right? Is there any, anything else here? Especially if we had, uh, if the copy was, uh, you know, was coming from an internationalization solution, we wouldn't have a clue. We would have to, to put a comment inside our code, okay? Then the authentication, the, the new offline stuff, CSRF, same stuff, uh, the activation of the account, and the default, the catch-all that says that, oops, we can't do anything about that. Okay, so these things are common throughout the app, and this one, is uh, actually common throughout the app, but there is a need to, you know, deal with it in a particular way on that screen. Okay, and that's the only new thing. I mean, that's the only thing that Jesse uh, uh, was told to implement, actually. Okay. So, that was the story of two screens, but what happens if, if it, uh, you know, if they become four? And uh, 16, I don't know, 12 or something, or, you know, infinite screens. Okay, couldn't find a better GIF here. Bear with me. Um, okay, something like that happens. Or, or if we, you know, keep being uh, very disciplined, we end up with boilerplate, repetition, no standard wave handling, and uh, pretty much cognitive overhead. Okay, by that I mean that there is no apparent way uh, that, uh, you know, there is no um, way to identify that uh, there is a single standard thing I have to do to deal with errors. Okay. So, let's go back a bit. Designing for errors. That's, that was a, a realization that hit me hard. Is expecting errors, is getting the product team involved, and is engineering it. I mean, we have endless conversation about the, the flavor of model view uh, uh, design pattern that we'll be using. And uh, it, it's going to be presenter or view model or uh, MVI or MV, uh, uh, you know, passive. Uh, um, it's, it's called MVP if it's the passive and the other uh, flavor. I don't know. Um, anyway, but when it comes to errors, we, we, we stop being engineers. I mean, I'm talking about myself, not you. Uh, so, what we would really want? I shouldn't put that here. Huh? Uh, uh, we should make it as easy and straightforward as ordering a burger. Okay, these are the most common ingredients, but who says that? I mean, who says that? No one. What we really say is that I need a cowboy burger without onions or with extra bacon. So, what we want from our error handling solution. We want it to be expressed in natural language. Something like offline versus, you know, um, a status comparison. And we need a set of default actions to deal, to deal with common cross-cut uh, concern errors. And we, and we want um, to be able to customize all of that stuff whenever it is needed. Okay, we, we need to be able to customize it by adding actions like the profanity validation thing here. 
override actions, skip actions at will, and uh, decide whether we should log something or not. For example, uh, we may be aborting calls uh, in order to throttle a search query. Why should we log that? I mean, abort may come as an error behind uh, I mean, uh, on the client, but why should we pollute our uh, uh, error uh, uh, reporter, aggregate, or whatever with these kind of errors? So, um, this is a library that we have written in Swift and Java, no JavaScript yet, although it started like although it started as JavaScript, okay? And uh, you can find it online. This, I hope it will be available in the next couple of months. So, this is uh, how it looks like. I mean, um, whenever you have to handle an error, you do pretty much, you can do stuff like that. Okay, so as you can see, uh, there's, a little, there's a few numbers here, okay? We have natural language, S3 not available, uh, profanity, offline, okay. And we have helpers that uh, um, lets, you, um, uh, lets you deal, actually register an action for every error, okay. And uh, it, gets, it may get pretty sophisticated. We, we can do, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of complex stuff. We can do... Um, for example, uh, deal with uh, the authentication error here, and because we deal with that, skip every, every other action, even if it matches. Um, we can uh, uh, put a retry policy inside of it. We can uh, swap our, our logger and, you know, swap our default logger with uh, the sentry logger here. And uh, we may always do an action when an error comes, but, this is, is where it may get to, okay? This is its potential. What we usually have to do is I uh, have to switch these slides, you know. Uh, okay, coming back to that. What we usually have to do is that. So what Jesse would have done, would have done, would have write, written this line and he would get with, uh, and with that, he would have, would have dealt with every common error, okay? Without even knowing about it, okay? He wouldn't have to know about, uh, you know, dealing with offline and CSRF. I mean, he may even, he may even uh, uh, didn't know what uh, CSRF was before, okay? Um, so, the strategy. We set up a default error handler once, okay, to deal with every error in his other app, and we customize it for every screen, for every action that needs customization. You know, it, it needs a little bit uh, of something to uh, uh, deliver the best user experience. Its API, its, um, its API is um, pretty straightforward. It's uh, when a matcher, the matcher is a predicate, okay? It's a function that uh, returns true or false. When something happens, perform an action. But we can alias. We can alias matters, okay? So we can register that uh, at one point inside the app, what offline means. We can register what validation error means, okay? And you have large apps, uh, like uh, the one I'm currently working on. You may deal with, uh, you know, the fact that um, different parts of the application have different ways of uh, um, uh, expressing the same uh, message. For, so, for example, a part of the API that was uh, written, you know, two years ago may use a, a, a special header to, you know, notify you about validation errors and uh, um, the latest uh, part of the API may, may use the, the proper 422 error code, okay? So, you actually encapsulate all of that inside the error handler, configured only once in, inside your app. And then you only use when with those aliases. Okay, so you alias every possible error with a number, with a, with a string, and then you only have to, do, to use that. Okay. Uh, we got several helpers. You get, a, you know, otherwise, if nothing matched, do that. Always do that. Log errors with that action. 
all the, you know, all that, all those nice sugar stuff. But the, the basic concept is that you get the defaults, spe specified ones. You can override them. You can use them throughout the app with a couple of lines. So, um, seeing that, done that, okay. Leo agrees. He may even approve that. Um, I have to say that it's been it's been um, one of those things that have that have had particular um, uh, significant. Uh, how am I? I'm looking. I'm looking for a word now. Um, it boosted anyway. It boosted our development uh, uh, velocity by far, and it you know it um, um, contributed very much to. Uh, our software be becoming more uh, solid and more resilient to errors. Uh, back to our story. This uh, is the, um, the error that uh, Jesse had to write. Okay. And this was the only new stuff that he had to write, and this turns into that. Okay. So uh, it's not just fewer lines. I believe it's more expressive. Okay, you get to know what you're dealing with instead of uh, using uh, arbitrary numbers and stuff like that. And it's in, at least it's a standard way of dealing with, with things. Okay, um, so we get from boilerplate to avoiding the boilerplate. Okay, specified only once. Repetition. No standard way of handling. We do have a standard way of handling now. And the cognitive overhead, I think it gets completely eliminated. That's all. There is no error you can handle with uh, our new library. Uh, you, can only check, you can already check out our Sys and Java implementations. Uh, I think we're going to uh, manage and put JavaScript out there uh, in the following months. Thank you very much. Any questions?